Hey, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. You got the social dictionary. Today we're going to look at a word that's very interesting. One of the most interesting terms that you might ever hear. Uncle Tom. This word is charged with a lot of feelings and a lot of emotion. But it started very positive and the term actually comes from a movement that actually helped, played a large role in ending slavery. It was also partly inspired by one of the most positive figures, one of the all-stars in African American history, Josiah Henson. What does it actually mean? The term Uncle Tom means a marginalized African American male who may share qualities with the dominant culture and the subculture. So he doesn't necessarily fit into either one. How did that turn into such a horrible thing? You got the social dictionary, we'll be back. First, we need to talk about Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uncle Tom's Cabin is a book, Harriet Beecher Stowe. It comes out prior to the Civil War, and it did a lot for the abolitionist movement. You can look up the numbers. It sold a ridiculous amount of copies, but you have to understand that pop culture has always been a big driving engine in social change. Nah. You know that. Pop culture has never really made that much a difference. Music and movies and hooey. So this book was a way that Northerners and even some of the people in the northern part of the slaveholding states, the northern part of the South, that let them know what slavery was actually like in the deeper part of the South. Being sold downriver, being sold deeper into slavery wasn't just, oh, they're a little bit more strict down there. They can handle this feisty old buck. No, there were some inhumane things that were going on on every level. I know what you're saying. There weren't inhumane things going on in the northern part of the South. Absolutely. But this book was often denied. Oh, this is unreal. What is she talking about? She doesn't know who these things. She even published a book citing her sources. Josiah Henson um, served as one of those sources. Now, Josiah Henson himself freed many slaves, started an institute for freed slaves that escaped out of slaveholding areas. He started the Dawn Settlement. The Dawn Settlement was a place, a community, where runaways could live in safety in Canada, Ontario, and they would teach the skills of living for themselves, subsistence farming, small economic skills, yada yada. So, if one of the all-stars of African American history was one of the inspirations to this character, and the book was so positive, and it really fired up the abolitionist movement. The abolitionist movement is the movement for abolishing slavery. This was a real thing. The Quakers, the many uh, people up north, yes, they had their resistance. There was racism everywhere, but there was a movement that, once again, just like there are political movements and social movements, all over the country today, this is one of the movements back then. That group exists. Where did the negative connotation come from? Today, a lot of times when you look at Uncle Tom being used, it is used as jealousy. What? So let's talk marginalization first. Marginalization works like this. Let's get off of black and white. Say Asians that moved to the country, settled on the West Coast. When they first came in large numbers, what did they do? They stayed in their neighborhoods, their cultural neighborhoods where they spoke the same language, they had the same customs. But eventually they wanted their children or they wanted people in their community to have more, to be able to have success outside of their community. So as someone got educated or someone learned to function in the mainstream society, they would use their cultural traits or their traditional traits less. Sometimes that was praised and other times they were marginalized. Oh, you're not fully us because now you're more like them. This is marginalization. So what does that look like in the African American community? Most of the time, you'll get one of two things. There is, wow, he made it, we made it. So proud of him. 
Then there's the other side, the jealousy side. And this may take a variety of looks and variety of flavors. So the jealousy side is where we'll find this harsh label of Uncle Tom. This is a person who goes out of their way. Here's our second definition. Someone who goes out of their way to please the dominant culture. Someone who goes out of their way to please white America. Who will bend over backwards to not appear black. Sometimes a certain lifestyle or a certain uh, collection of uh, entertainment endeavors can get somebody a label of an Uncle Tom. But really what people mean and these superficial assumptions or these superficial pieces of evidence are just people's way of thinking is that person going out of their way to distance themselves from me? Is that person trying to not be us? And the harsh thing, the terrible thing is unfortunately a lot of times by calling somebody an Uncle Tom you are actually distancing them from you. Once again, the early portion of the Civil Rights Movement, what was one of the biggest things they fought for? Education and jobs. Now, people that have received that education, received those jobs, sometimes fall prey to jealousy. Now, sometimes it's not achievements, money, academics, etc. Sometimes it's behavior. Behavior may get you that label. Someone who does receive a level of, of success but doesn't support others who are trying to get that level of success can be labeled an Uncle Tom. There's a variety of ways of looking at it. But whether it's the book definition of marginalized African American whose behavior and culture makes him successful in the mainstream world or if it is someone who goes out of their way to distance themselves from their culture, Uncle Tom is a very loaded word in our modern American society. Let's take a look. Johnny grows up in a predominantly black community. Johnny gets into college. And his peer group, with all his college uh, uh, friends, now is shortened to some people back home and a lot of college friends. Johnny gets a job. That job takes up a lot of time. He meets some friends at his job and now his peer group is other working people that have similar schedules. Johnny has kids. Johnny gets married. Now Johnny has a family. Johnny gets, Johnny gets a promotion that takes up more time and he has more responsibility. As these things change in his life, his peer group change, his behavior is going to change, maybe his values didn't change, maybe who he is underneath didn't change, but his time and his surroundings have changed. And because his time and his surroundings have changed, a lot of times that will get Johnny the label of Uncle Tom. And he's not necessarily going out of his way to shun his culture or please the other. It's just the hours that he spends trying to raise his family. What do you think? What are some of the thi what are some of the things that could get somebody the label of Uncle Tom in modern day America? Actually, that might be a good show. That might be a good video. Or it might be a good discussion piece. What are some things? I got my list of people that can be, whether it's positive or negative. Heck, anybody who's who's any African American who went and achieved something or got something has had you know, one person not know what to say to them so they were labeled an Uncle Tom. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, always like, share, and subscribe. Tell me what you want to talk about next and we'll see if we can't get that in front of the camera. Be good to yourself.